Now, complete high school football coverage with John Apicello, Alyssa Ray, and Eric Johnson. This is 10 Sports First in 10. Sponsored by Glass & Associates, DeHart Tile, Shules, and Blue Ridge Towers. Week four begins with this reminder to those that sometimes get a little too big for your britches. Stay in your lane. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. The first and 10 crew is taking this baby up to 88 miles per hour. And I think we all know where we're headed from there. The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Week four is here, so stay in your lane. Jeff Williamson always delivering some style along with all that content you need and want. First and 10 on WSLS.com. Week four delivered a number of matchups worthy of the top spot. So we hashed it out from Bird to Manita to Grayson. We wound up in Floyd. Floyd County hosted Fort Chiswell tonight in a battle of three and O teams, both packing great defenses, impressive coaches. Our own Alyssa Ray was there for the knockdown drag out battle. It is our game of the week. Both Floyd County and Fort Chiswell are 3-0 entering this week's Game of the Week, but the big storyline for Floyd County is the Buffaloes haven't allowed a single point over three games, but Fort Chiswell's offense could give them a run for their money. Floyd County looking to protect their home field in front of a packed house. Buffaloes trailing 6-0 at the half, but stampeded out of the gate to start the third quarter on the kick return. Caleb Turner returns it all the way to the end zone and Floyd County takes a 7-6 lead. To the fourth quarter, Fort Chiswell on the one. Tyler Jakubiak spins in for the score. Two-point conversion is good. 14-7 Pioneers. After a Buffalo TD to tie it 14 all, another shift in momentum. Chiswell's Tanner Bailey tosses it downfield. It is batted around, but Floyd's Trevon Villa comes up with it, but gets knocked out before the goal line. <laughs> Quarterback Ian Barry finishes the drive with a 20-yard run for the go-ahead touchdown. With three minutes left, the defense did the rest, and the Buffaloes held the Pioneers from scoring on their final drive, solidifying their 21 to 14 win. Your team hasn't trailed all season with three shutouts. What can you say about them battling back the way that they did to win this one? Uh, just the resilience and the will to win. You know, we told them sometimes will is more important than skill, and we just had that will that one way or another we're going to win this football game. I mean, it was just. Super effort. They've got a great football team as well. You know, they're going to go a long ways, and uh, we just feel lucky to come out of here for win, to be very honest with you. The Floyd County players said earlier in the week when they do get shutouts, they're rewarded with milkshakes. Well, I don't think there'll be any milkshakes for the Buffaloes tonight. I'm sure they're proud of that stop on the last drive. In Floyd County, Alyssa Ray, WSLS 10 Sports. All right, thanks, Alyssa. Will over skill. How about in the Mountain Empire? Galax, 63-7 over Royal Retreat. Denver, uh, Glenburg, pardon me, goes to 4-0, 41-21. Eastmont, one point short of getting a tie, at least to get to their first win. Again, they're looking for their first win tonight. The Maroons, 24-21 over Chilhowee this evening. Gretna coming to Radford with a 3-0 record is enough, but one of the Bobcats players, Eric Burdett, was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma after last week's game. So tonight, the school and the community come together with students versus cancer. Everybody wearing purple, and the Bobcats are out in support of number 66. He's clearly off the field today, and obviously we wish him a great comeback and return. Meantime, special teams stepping up early. First quarter for the Bobcats. Punts blocked by Justin Justice Marshall. Taken for the defensive touchdown. Two-point conversion. 8-0 Radford. Gretna responds to Bron Mabins to Jalen Myers. Touchdown. Two-point conversion. Good. Game tied at eight. Late in the game, Mabins finds the end zone in the fourth quarter. Short run. Hawks seven-point lead. They go to 4-0 with the victory tonight, 15-8. to eight. Meantime, Narrows and Giles in the battle of Giles County. Narrows with the ball. This is, uh, that's a lateral, so it's a fumble. There's a scrum who's got it. It's Logan O'Brien from Giles, and they are in business. We know about Ryan Bottleman. 
We know what he can do in the single wing, and we're about to see it. Here he comes right up the gut, and that is perfection. Single wing, 7-0 Giles. How about some bottlement on defense? Narrows at the goal line, and bottlement is going to be Johnny on the spot. We've got a slick pick six. We'll speed it up for you. 94 yards later, Giles is in command. They go on to a 35-0 victory. How about the Cougars at James River? Jake Phillips versus his old high school coach, Chris Jones. It is student versus teacher tonight. Cougars quarterback K.J. Moore keeping the ball rumbled in from four yards out. 12-0 Covington. The Knights and the student going to try and strike right back. Coulter Hodges into the zone. 12-6 Covington. But eventually Covington would prevail. K.J. Moore going for a 49-yard John Cougars win in overtime. 26-24. Coach Jones goes for two and gets the win. Pioneer District heading to West Virginia. And as you can see, Pendleton County of West Virginia, a big victory. Montcalm over Craig County, 32 to 12. I'm sure that in 1985, plutonium is available in every corner drugstore. But in 1955, it's a little hard to come by. What's not hard to come by? That would be Larry Basham touchdowns tonight. And while we're at it, Golden Eagles taking flight. Plenty of those tonight. Meanwhile, the Vikings were making things tough on the Spartans, plus this. You're watching Varsity with Abby, Alyssa, and Eric on WSLS 10. Tonight's breakdown, another collision of playoff teams from a year ago, Martinsville at William Byrd, obviously not in the same divisions, but both had some work to replace some pieces from last year. Eric, we know Byrd's rebuilt their lines, so they've got that running back. They got plenty of uh, offense, so to speak. Martinsville needed a quarterback. Looks like they found one. Basically, we just had a lot of Bulldogs going at it. And <laughs> this is exactly right on both sides. And yes, they found that guy, Jordan Hundley. But I got to tell you, the Terriers, they did plenty of work tonight to tame that Bulldog. And yes, he is one of those guys that you have to watch out for. He's kind of quick. He's got a big arm. But as I said, the Terriers, they had another thing coming for the Bulldogs tonight. Out to the dog pound in Vinton we go. Coach Highfield coaching game 1,000 of his stint at Bird, both football and soccer combined. Congrats to him. First quarter, it's Sam Dantzler going up top, 40 yards to Terrell Smith for the touchdown. Later, Dantzler, he puts on his dancing shoes. Check him out here, Fox charting his way to the house, 40 yards down the field. Even got some help from his teammate there, bouncing off of him, 14-0 Terriers. Few drives later, it's going to be Larry Bashing Basham, you know the name, into the end zone for the touchdown score, but Martinsville showing signs of life. Check out this off the pass on Bay Johnson. It's going to force a fumble. Boom! Recovered by Nigel Davis. Right place, right time. He scores this touchdown. That was his second of the game, but that was all the barking that the Bulldogs could do tonight. Larry Basham rushed for 163 yards, scored five touchdowns. Four came in the first half. Defense stingy all night. That's TJ, my cousin Johnson, with the big sack on the play. William Bird rolls 47 14 against Martinsville. Sam's added a lot to us. Uh, we had a good running back quarterback last year running in Reese Watson, and that was a hole we had to fill. Sam's done a real nice job. He's got, uh, got good vision, good quick feet. Uh, and as he tells me, he's a lot tougher than his size, so uh, it's been good. Uh, Larry had a good game uh, defensively. Uh, we played pretty good. Uh, we gave up 14 points. We don't like that. But, uh, I mean, we played a good team against good athletes, uh, and, and we got the job done, so that's all that matters. All right, William Burry ecstatic to get a win tonight at home. Coach Highfield's message to the team, stay focused. They make a tough trip to Richlands next week, and their schedule gets tougher at the end of the season with juggernauts like Stanton River and, of course, Lord Botetot. This is certainly a team nobody will want to face anytime soon. Expect them to make some noise deeper into the season. Happy? They are improving every week. Meantime, another Piedmont team with their hands full tonight at a talented, as a talented Warriors team took their act into North Carolina. And let me tell you, you're going out of the frying pan and into the fire when you go to Reedsville. 
Magna Vista falls 35 to nothing your final. Meantime, Patrick County over at North Stokes, North Carolina, 13 to six. We continue in the Blue Ridge and Bird certainly one front runner. Botetot has to be considered a second. Tonight at Rockbridge, a former district member now in the Valley District, Rockbridge County. Here they come trying to tackle the Cavaliers who are 3-0. and And here we go, Evan Eller giving it to the freshman Hunter Rice. And look at him book, 45 yards and he's in. 7.42 on the clock at 7-0. Rockbridge trying to get things going. Ben Rodenizer keeping the ball, a little scramble, a little ramble, but hold on, ball pops out. Evan Eller is on it right there for the recovery. And Lord Botetot taking advantage. Now it's Jake DeWeese giving it to Hunter Rice. And Rice doing what he does, rambling into the zone. Lord Botetot goes to 4-0, 41-28. to Liberty at Stanton River, a battle of undefeated teams, 2-0 versus 3-0. Yes, it was homecoming, and yes, Liberty has Taylor Carson getting into the zone from three yards out. From that point on, it was all Stanton River. Grayson Overstreet, 65-yard rumble. Look at number 24. He gets bigger, he gets stronger, and you know what? He's just as fast, 8-7 after the conversion. We jump ahead to the third quarter. Look at him go again. Overstreet from 57 yards out. And it was all Golden Eagles. Yeah, they are proud Mary. The river is rolling tonight. Just tough kids. You know, they work hard in practice and they do the right things and, and it shows on the field. All right, here we go. A Blue Ridge District score for you. William Fleming falls. At North Stafford, that one's 70 to 27. Salem lost a tough emotional game last week, that state finals rematch. Tonight, a dangerous bounce back game against an improving North Side team. That said, uh, we'll get you out to North Side. Both teams two and one. Salem, their quarterback Jack Gladden going up top to Avery Close. The big fella hauls it in and then rumbles on in. Not to be denied, he's in the zone. But credit the Vikings defense. This game was just 7-0 at the half, and here's a good reason why. Isaiah Stevens inside making a big hit off the corner for the stop. Salem, point blank, could not cash it in. Noah Horton, big fella inside, 78 man in the middle, stuffing him. And how about one more time as they hold Salem out Eventually, the Spartans get it done 27 to nothing, but credit Northside and their effort tonight in what is always a physical ball game. Albemarle at Patrick Henry tonight, and uh, I guess there was a toga party early on, close game all night at PH. This is Jaquan Anderson faking the handoff, and look at him go 40 yards. That's an athlete right there for the tying score. 14 all PH answers. Grant Jennings up the middle, pinballing his way in. PH 21-14. Here comes Juwan Anderson again, and he's gonna terse reverse, call it Urs. Yeah, that's a reverse of field for a touchdown. Albemarle would botch an extra point in this game. PH made him pay. 28-27, Patriots victorious. Allegheny at Cave Spring, and an early look. Cave Spring was up 27 to nothing and in command. Pick it up second half, Allegheny Trying to get on the board, Rick Lanahan Jr. scoop and uh, score are right there. A little bit later on, Nate Russ, Russ Meisel would get on in, but Cave Spring had a comfortable lead and they would ice it away. Jacob Knight coming up their quarterback would pinball in. 34-14, Cave Spring earns a victory over Allegheny tonight. Abington at Christiansburg, the Blue Demons, and here we go, Abington on the move. Pierre Jordan up the gut, and he's going to get in. Abington leading at this point. Christiansburg's going to fight back. Nick Cook coming up, going up top and to Grayson Cridling, and he's caught it, and he's rumbling, and a nice game. Bruins are in business. Christiansburg continuing the drive, but it would stall, and this one goes to Abington. The Falcons 29-7. to Who's getting their first win tonight? Uh, that would be Franklin County in overtime, 
Hidden Valley still winless on the year, but a good game tonight goes to OT. Blacksburg on the road and Pulaski 49 to 6. If we could somehow harness this lightning, channel it into the flux capacitor, it just might work. We have at least one flux capacitor for our director, Amit Patel, to crank up in there. 1.21 gigawatts, easily obtainable for that crowd. Can the Red Devils save the clock tower and clock the colonels? Next. Jeff Williamson is our own Doc Brown. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? If there was, Jeff would post it on the first and 10 site. Halifax at Dan River tonight. One and one Halifax. The Comets taking on two and one Dan River. We're in Pennsylvania County, less than a minute and a half in. Jamal Brandon taking the handoff, and he is streaking like a Comet would, easily, and he scores. He would have a busy night, but late first quarter, Robert Carter going to scoop this up and return the kick 70 yards. Dan River just has a knack for winning games, including this one, 20 to 19, your final. Dogwood scores for you. Chatham and Tunstall. It was all Tunstall tonight. And George Mason over Nelson County, 42 to 24. All right, our buddy Jonathan Merriman used to talk about Rustburg out to Vista all the time. That's right. He says just because they, they Two schools are 17 miles apart. They just didn't like each other. Yeah, and you know, when you have games like that, you can throw the records out the way, you right. know? You have a lot of emotion in games like this. No exception tonight on the field. Take you out to Alta Vista, one and one Rustburg in town for this one. Early on, first quarter, Landon Tucker is going to hand it off to Trey Quan Tucker. Big gain on the play, shake and bake. That will later lead to a Landon Tucker touchdown. He kept it himself, and Rustburg goes up seven and nothing here later. In the second quarter, Tucker, he's going to hand it off to Mr. Shamar, not my brother Johnson here on the play. 7-0, <laughs> Rustburg still up, but wait a minute. Mm. Tucker hands it again to Shamar Johnson. He punches it in for the touchdown a little later. He is my cousin on this play here. He's 20, tough like you. 28-14, Rustburg gets the win tonight. Meanwhile, LCA hosting Brunswick. Check out Rashad Jennings at the game, dancing with the stars. All right, nice. He's, Got a little fox chart here. Check him out. Ryland Stam hands off to Josh Davison. Blast through the touchdown. 29 nothing LCA. They went on to win 52 to 16 tonight. Seminole District scores. Brookville takes care of Harrisonburg. 38-28 to remain perfect on the season. All Happy. right, a couple of VIS scores before we move along. Independent scores. Celtics trying to remain undefeated and big in that 10 strong poll. They did so. 47 nothing as you can see North Cross and BES play tomorrow. Starting quarterback Adonis Alexander not making the ECU trip. The Red Sox fined for sign stealing in the Indian streak snapped at 22. All right, that is all of it. Twas a fine show indeed. Your name is Calvin, isn't it? Calvin Klein. It's written all over your underwear.